Welcome to the Performance Enhancing Podcast. It's like steroids for your brain. A podcast for people looking to live life at their peak potential. Chock full of real world tools and knowledge that you can apply in your life today. By providing you with a lens into the lives, beliefs, practices, and actions of those who are already living extraordinary lives, the Performance Enhancing Podcast will help you shift your mindset or create that change in your daily rituals and habits so you can explode with success in the areas of life that are most important to you. So get ready for another dose of Performance Enhancing Podcast with Satori Prime. Here's your host, Elon Ferdman. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another performance enhancing podcast with your host, Elon Ferdman. And we're back here with part two of my interview with Steve Sims. And again, just an absolute model of what it means to be raw, what it means to just do you and not give a shit about everyone else. If you ever want to know what's possible when you tap into that, Steve Sims is what's possible. A line that he used and I, and I thought is brilliant is that we as humans, we love the imperfections. We love the raw and the edgy. And yet in our own lives, we feel like we need to somehow stop that from being in existence. And people just gravitate to authenticity. And that's what he's developed over these years. In this particular section, we, we kind of stopped talking about the bluefish business and we talk a lot more about his ugly Sims business, which is the whole concept of this being raw. And he takes that into the marketing world. Very, very cool. He's going to share with you some tips as well and some incredible stories along the way that he's learned. So enjoy part two and I'll talk to you real soon. I noticed that a lot of people, King's clothes, or I think you call the fable, uh, the emperor's clothes, um, the story about only intelligent people can see the clothes and that the emperor, the king's naked. Um, people try to overcomplicate things and they try to put on a sharp suit and they try to wear a 50 grand watch and you know they lease the shit out of a price of car that they can't afford just to impress someone else when it's not. We're animals, okay? And we meet someone and we're, we're, we're a couple of degrees past the dog. We're sniffing each other out. Do I like this person? Yeah. Can I trust this person? And if you're there with suit that you feel uncomfortable in, a, a watch on it which you spent your kids' school fees on just to be able to have an expensive watch, believe it or not, you're holding on to that baggage and that's heavy on your shoulders. So you're feeling slightly uncomfortable about it and you're giving off that aura to somebody. And now they're there going, with this person I feel uncomfortable about. Whoa, I don't want to... You've never done business with anyone you feel uncomfortable with, have you? Yeah. You just don't do it. So the trouble is you're not actually giving them my perception. It's much better to walk in there with a Mickey Mouse swatch on and a T-shirt and just go, should we have a beer? Let's chat. If we connect, great. If we don't, hey, I respect your time, okay? And just be you because it takes far more effort to be someone who you're not than it is for you to be you. So I got asked a couple of places to um, speak because I was doing this weird and wacky stuff, um, sending people down the Titanic and all that stuff. And I got asked to speak. And then I noticed that I was actually talking about being an entrepreneur and identifying your brand and standing out within the marketplace and how to keep things, I hate this, it makes me sound like Jay-Z, but how to keep things real. Um, and then I was being asked to talk, not about Bluefish, not about what I do, but how entrepreneurs can identify a marketplace for them. And strangely enough, I got called to speak at Harvard. And the, the short story here, is that I actually thought it was an April Fool's joke. So I actually told the person on the phone, fuck off. And <laughs> then uh, I hung up. And then they, uh, my PA got a call back from the faculty head of Harvard Business School saying that my phone had just got cut off and could they connect me? So she phoned me up and she went, did you just tell them? And I went, yeah, I did. And they went, well, it's real. And I was like, oh, shit. So I was like, hello, how are you? you know? And so I ended up speaking at Harvard. Um, and I ended up speaking two years running. And that kind of just just blossomed into a, a speaking career where I go out and talk about it. And then um, I coined Ugly Sims um, because everything I do is ugly, raw, imperfect, because I noticed a synergy between what we liked and the imperfections. Now, hey, if I'm buying a phone, 
I'm buying an iPhone because I know I want that thing to be perfect, okay? But if I'm hanging, if I especially say music, for I'm going to say, you listen to someone like Nina, Nina Simone, you know, the voice is all over the place, the saxophone in the place is off called good rock music. When a guitar suddenly kind of lifts out of note, you know, it's that imperfection that suddenly makes you go, ah, oh, yeah, you know. Um, Cindy Crawford, bloody great water on lip, you know, Picasso, two eyeballs on one side of the head. We love the imperfections. That's actually what catches us. You flip through a magazine where every guy is absolutely toned and every woman, shockingly, is 12 and a half foot tall because they yep. photoshop to the makeup. And you just gloss over that. You don't notice it. So you start to notice things that are raw, that are primitive, that are edgy. And that's what I started marketing on. And strangely enough, um, I'm still having shits and giggles on that, as you can see, but I actually worked for a very, very uh, good quality Swiss watch, uh, an Italian watch, actually, uh, that's that built in Switzerland. Uh, and I ended up working for Jet Charter companies. I ended up for working for, for realtors that were building these condominiums. I ended up working for these huge brands, but on re-identifying that clientele or potential clientele and actually teaching them how to market and communicate to them. Because you send out a brochure and you pick all these pretty pictures of these elongated women and these beautiful hunky men, stuff like that. You're sending them out to people that don't look like that. Yeah. So the first thing you do is alienate yourself by saying, hey, we work with the beautiful people. These people don't exist for a start because it's all been photoshopped. And you're now going out and you're telling other people that? That's why you're not in business. You send out a postcard saying, I get shit done. Give me a call. Funny enough, people will appreciate that. And if they don't, they weren't meant to be your client in the first place. Yeah. You know, it, it's something that you're alluding to, which we speak a lot about uh, when we train people, which is authenticity. And I think what stops people generally from being authentic is they feel like if they actually showed their true self, if people found out who they really are, they're not going to want to be around them anymore. And oh, it's, yeah. it's the biggest load of shit. It's, it's something that I think humans bought hook, line, and sinker for whatever reason. And yet we know from experience to exactly what you touched on you connect with people who are raw, who are vulnerable, who just are who they are without giving a shit or making excuses for it. Those are the people we tend to want to be around. And you even mentioned yourself, like at some point you're just like, I'm not going to play the game. I'm just going to be my raw self. And that's when everything kind of starts snowballing for you. Oh yeah. I, I can literally see a line in the sand of, of when it changed. Um, I tell everyone and I teach people to be, and I'm 48 years old, I teach everyone to be a 48-year-old, two-year-old. Um, mm. I teach people to be two. Now, anyone that's got kids out there, they deliver that kid to a new school. Within a few hours, that kid's found where it fits and it goes in place. And you turn around to your little girl or your daughter, your son, and you say, hey, why aren't you playing with Johnny over there? I don't like Johnny. You know, why don't you go and play with Susie? I don't like Susie. And they go off. I don't, like, I don't like Bobby, he's fat, he's blue, he's green, he's tall, he's short. Yeah. There's, no, there's no diplomacy, it's just raw honesty that they don't want to play with that kid. And that kid's not offended, you know, he's off playing with his own clique. And then we're taught to dilute what we say and we're taught to, hey, no, you can't say that, yeah. you have to adapt. So we've got so much freedom at, at, two, at two years old, as Dan Sullivan said, you know, we, we're given freedom as kids. And then we're taught not to be free, and then we spend the rest of our life trying to get that freedom back. Mm. I work with people I like. And if I don't like that person, or more importantly, that person doesn't like me, that free to go elsewhere. I'm not going to take offense by it. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that saw me the first second on this video, and they clicked off two seconds later. They don't want to talk to a guy in a black T-shirt and, and earrings. And that's fine. I'm not trying to get your business. For all those other people out there that are saying, hey, I like the way this guy's being more and energetic. That's just because it's me. I'm not trying to give you something I'm not. Yeah. And if it resonates and helps you with your business, then that's what I want. That's the security I'm trying to get across. Yeah, it's so funny. I'm sure you have this experience where people will see you on a video or something and they somehow expect that you're going to be different when they meet you. And then when you're not, <laughs> it's refreshing to them. They're like, wait, so you're always like that? I always try to explain to people that if they meet me at a live event, and we go grab a beer, this is exactly what they're going to get. It's not all of a sudden like a video version Elon turns off and I turn into something else. 
I gave that up so many years ago because, like you said, it was just a pain in the fucking ass to try it's heavy. something. It's heavy, isn't it? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, there's, that stuff's a monkey on your back. And yeah. it's hard work to be somebody else. It is easy. It, is, it, is, it takes no effort to be you. Yeah. Do you notice that people are a certain way at work? are a certain way when they come home, are a certain way with their wife, are a certain way with their kids. They're just like little chameleons wherever they go. Well, yeah, because we're watching the TV and we're taught that when you go to work, you act like this. And when you're at home, you act like this. And when you're out with the boys, well, you've got to be tougher. You've got to be funny. You've got to... So it's, it's very hard. And again, we're being, we're being bombarded all the time that if, if, you, if you drive this car, you've got to look like this. If you like this music, you've got to look like this. And because no one, I say no one, very few of us are confident in who we are, we try to fit into that click. Um, mm-hmm. And the marketing gurus are teaching us that, oh, if you want to look like this, well, you have to buy this glass yeah. of, of wine. If you want to look like this, you've got to wear that watch. You've got to wear that shirt. And... They follow it because of pack animals. They think, well, if I drink that wine and I wear that shirt and I, and I smoke that cigar, I'll have that private jet because it was on the advert. And <laughs> people are very susceptible to that. Yeah, I call them sheeple. <laughs> yeah, never heard that one. No, yeah. <laughs> this is another word, but we go for sheeple. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, I feel like I had a moment, and maybe you can share yours, where it actually felt like I got unplugged. Like the Matrix, literally, it was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I, I, can you, I can tell you that is, I can tell you where that was. I can tell you what it was. Um, I was starting to do a lot of these parties. And as I say, at the beginning, I was on the door. Um, and then eventually, I started not being the doorman and going to these parties. And I tried to get into some high-end events. So I would always turn up. And everywhere that you see me, and no matter where, where you've seen me on TV and stuff, I'm always in a black T-shirt and jeans and Mind the man on a motorbike. So I started to go to other people's events. And I thought, well, if I'm going to their event, you know, I better look a bit sharp. And I went out and I got some nice suits and I put a tie on so I couldn't breathe. And, you know, I would walk into these events and I would, you know, I couldn't get a whiskey or beer. You know, I, I had to get a glass of champagne or something. I had to fit in. Okay. And I would get that. And then all the people that I was talking to were jet charter company salespeople or insurance, or other stuff shirts that were uncomfortable in that scenario. Mm-hmm. And something wasn't right. I wasn't connecting. It didn't feel right. It wasn't resonating. It wasn't authentic. So I thought to myself, I'm going to take a step back and I'm just going to go to a few of these events and I'm going to sit right at the back of the event and I'm going to observe because I'm missing something somewhere. I can't see it. So I would turn up and again, I'll turn up on a bike of mine, black t-shirt, jeans, stick the bike around the back somewhere attach the helmet into it, go into the, to the party, sit at the back of the bar, grab a whiskey or a beer, and then observe. And then one guy would say, so what are you doing here? I'm just having a whiskey, you know. Before I knew it, I was actually chatting with people, and I noticed that the life insurance salesman was talking to the car salesman, and the, the jet charter guy was talking to the, to the finance guy. And before you knew it, the salespeople were all congregating over here at the free cocktail, and all the people that really matter were over here talking dirty jokes and drinking over whiskey. I suddenly found that people, people gravitate to authenticity. And that was, my, that was my shining moment. I thought, fuck, I've spent so long trying to be something I wasn't. When I wasn't trying to be that, I had a successful business. Right, that's done. I'm back to, I'm back to the way I am. Then I would just turn up and literally just pull up on the bike, leave it with a valet, walk in with a black T-shirt, Love me, leave me, whatever, I'm here. And I found that that resonated. So I found that that was my shining moment by being who I was. It took no effort. Yeah. It's such a relief. Like, I mean, you called it a monkey. I mean, I think it's like an elephant on your back. It's way heavier. Um, and it's interesting, as you are telling the story, what you mentioned before about teaching people to be two-year-olds and how they do that, it never goes away, right? Like the same no, thing no, no. I noticed at the bar. It's the same thing. Now it's sugar-coated with this and that, but it's the same animalistic thing. It's like you go in that room and you say, yes, yes, no, 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 yes, yes, no, no, and that's it, subconscious. 
Oh, you've never left the playground. The playground yeah. may be may be bigger and may have like Astro Turf and a couple of flowers on the edge, but the playground has never ever changed. And that mentality of the bully, the tart, the, the smart kid, the one that thinks he's cooler, the mentality has been there forever. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just curious because we were talking about books and it's just kind of sitting in my mind. Uh, I know you mentioned Ari's book. He's been on the show. I've been on his. He's amazing. People know him. Uh, if you don't, Ari Mizell, lessdoing.com. Um, what other books are you engaged in reading, loving? Well, Joe's just sent me uh, the book, and he's got an interest in Joe the Center, um, Spartan, head of Spartan. So I'm actually doing an event in a couple of weeks' time where I've got to, for my sins, I've got to go down to Mexico for two weeks. So um, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't hate me. Um, yeah. But I, I'm taking a whole bunch of books down there. So I've actually been collecting uh, these books like Joe DeSena's uh, I'm taking down there with me. And there's another couple that have actually come over here. Um, Paul Douglas and uh, Robert Anspach sent me one. So I'm taking a collection of books down there. Um, after a couple of pages, if they grab me, I'll continue with them. If they don't, you know, there'll be a, a beer mat. So um, <laughs> there's, there's a few <laughs> things. Yeah, I'll pass them off. Yeah, there you go. This is a really good back book. It'll hold open your door. So, uh, yeah, so uh, at the moment, I'm really interested in reading uh, Joe DeSena. There was a really cool book that caught me uh, that I've got to give a shout out to. Uh, Mike Moe, this one. And it talks about the infancy of sketching and really how to kind of like be really primitive with the way you communicate with people. And he's done a good job on this book. So I'm really enjoying that one. But overall, Grab anything. You can't read half a book and not grow from it. Yeah. Um, there are people with opinions, and they may be stupid opinions. I've read books that have been utter crap, and I've got halfway through it, and I've got this is the biggest pile of shit, never going to read it again, throw it in the bin, but it stirred something up inside me that's causing me to react to that bullshit. So I've grown from the crap that this guy spouted. So you can't not grow from something that you read. Yeah. I also know that you're a big proponent of networking, masterminds, stuff like that. Um, what, is, what have you found has been a big benefit in surrounding yourself in those kind of high-level masterminds? Well, I'm trying to think who the person – I surround myself with people far more intelligent than me, which is never really hard, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but uh, one, of, one of these uh, very intelligent people – Turn around and said, You are the combination of your five closest friends. So if you surround yourself with five Muppets, then guess what you are? Um, so uh, people like Jason Gay and Nard, Joe Polish, Dean Jackson, uh, they've helped me surround myself with uh, more intelligent people. And so I love going to those environments, and you've got to invest in it. You've got to be ready to puke at these places. You've got to be able to go there and go, Hey, I want to do this, or how do I do this? And if you go there and just sit there and think it's just going to come into you, you yeah. soak it up like a sponge, you're an idiot. You've got to get out there and go, I really, I really like the way you're doing that. How did you do that? What's your opinion on this? And you've got to, you've got to bury yourself into it and get it in there. And luckily, I've been doing that for quite some years now. So I am very fortunate. Uh, I had a problem the other week, and I phoned up Joe Polish, and I said, how is this happening? And he was like, you, look, look, I think he referred to me as a fucking Muppet. And then, <laughs> said, to me, and then said, look, you, you, you just do this, or why aren't you doing this like you used to? And we do dangerously overcomplicate things. Yes. And I suddenly went, uh, I don't know. And he went, well, there you got the answer and hung up on me. So um, it's good that you can actually surround yourself with people. So I love networking too. To a point, I'm not the guy that loves to go in there, get the free drink and go, oh, hi, my name's Stephen. I'm really important. Let me tell you why. I like to go to events where there's some really interesting characters where I can just speak to people and just go, I, I really would like your opinion on this. You know, why are you so right and I'm so wrong? And challenge it. Never be intimidated to challenge someone's opinion because there's a lot of bastard geniuses out there that have that opinion because they read it on the back of someone else's book. And I want to know why you support that opinion. Why do you think that's right? Why do you think I'm wrong? You may not have even given your opinion yet, but just challenge them and go, well, what makes you the expert? You know, mm -hmm. you came out with that statement. 
sounded cool. Where'd you get it from? What happened to create that in you that gave you that opinion? Yeah. And try to get to the root of it um, so that you can learn how they came to that point because you never know when you may actually come to your own point by using that same methodology. Yeah. I really like the point that Steve just made, which is when you show up to these events, it's up to you to pull the value. And I feel like whether people are um, in courses, whether they're at these live events, they tend to do that where they sit in the back and just think this thing's going to like wash over them. And miraculously, they're going to walk out of this thing like transformed or a better business person or a better marketer or whatever. And I think understanding that and knowing that you need to go in there with intention, pulling it towards you and putting yourself in there. And you know, it's funny, you like keep self-deprecating, but clearly you're smart enough to know what you need to do and who you need to surround yourself with in order to have the life that you have. And for me, that's genius, right? You You don't have to be book smart. You don't have to graduate from Harvard. You need to understand how life works, how people work and know how to use that in order to build yourself up and grow from it. And in that respect, I think you've mastered it. Well, thank you very much. Um, Just to expand a little bit more on that, when people go to these events, and I go to a lot of events, I go to a lot of networking events, a lot of mastermind events, a lot of these seminars. Do be prepared that 40% of it is shit. 40% Mm -hmm. of it is not going to resonate with you. 40% of it could be speaking to you in Hindu. You'd have no idea what the bloody hell they're on about, okay? You can spend two days at a seminar and hear one line that you now incorporate into your life, your relationship, your love, and... It changes things. You only need one degree to go from here to end up here. Yeah. So just go along and look for that one nugget. And I've been to events where I'm on the second day at 3.30 in the afternoon, and I'm thinking, nothing's connected. Nothing's resonated. Nothing's made me sit up in my chair and get off these free skittles. And then someone stands up online and says, well, why didn't we do this? And I've just got, whoa, whoa, can you back up? Why do you say that? Well, if we did this, we do that. And I'm like, whoa, here we go. And then it literally is that one thing that gets you back to motivation and propelling you in the right path, a different path, but it gets you moving. And all you need to do is get that one step forward to be going in the right direction. Yeah. And I also found that in those events, generally, like whatever happens in the room happens in the room, but dinner bar, people interacting with people, that more of the connection, that one-on-one getting to know someone, why they think about the world a certain way, how they're doing things. That to me is always the gold. And that's the reason that I love going to these things. I mean, the speakers are great. And sometimes you land on an amazing speaker, but generally I think the people in the room for me impact my experience much more than just the speakers. Absolutely. You can, be, you can be sitting next to the answer without yeah. knowing it until you actually ask the right question. Yeah. You generally are sitting next to the perfect person. Yeah. That I found. It's just, it, you may not know. And it's always like funny. You look over to your right and your left. And you're like sizing up the people. You're like, who is this person? Why am I sitting next to them? And then all of a sudden you start chatting. You're like, all right, now I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, bear, in mind, bear in mind, they're in the same room for the same reason. So you're already kindred spirits. Yeah, exactly. So I want to ask you this final question, uh, which we ask all our guests. And it's the cliche of, I wish I knew then what I know now. So you've had multiple life experience, multiple careers. Uh, <laughs> but what's something you wish you would have known earlier on that you would have gone back and told yourself or that you just wish you would have done? I played this game. And as you know, I've done a, done a few interviews. and. Uh, um, I've had that question, you know, a, a couple of times. Who is it? Who is it? They stole yeah. my question. Who they stole- better do that? I'm um, Do you know the funny thing is, I've done, I've done things that I wish I hadn't have done, and I've got hurt and scarred, uh, both physically um, and financially and mentally. But each time, 
it's propelled me to do something different. Yeah. And I've gone back and I've gone to myself, well, you know, I, I tried going up that, that hill on that motorcycle and I fell off and I broke my arm. And, you know, so the arm heals up and I know that I need a lighter bike with a bigger engine. And the next time I get up that hill, yeah, I wish I had broken my arm, but if I had broken my arm, I wouldn't know what was necessary to get me up that hill. Now I'm the king of that fucking hill. So I'm not sure that there's anything that I wouldn't have done, but I would have tapped myself on the shoulder, passed myself a good whiskey, and just said, hold on, and just smile at everything. Mm. I think that would have been it. Mm. That's really good. I, you know, it's funny. I was just talking to my brother right before we got on here, and he's just going through some stuff right now. And we were just talking about how the stuff that we tell ourselves about certain situations can make it either super heavy or enjoyable, life lesson, you know, growth, et cetera. And it's interesting that you just said that, which is just smile through it, which is kind of like the theme of this. Keep it simple, right? Yeah. Just smile through it and you'd be amazed what a smile does, right? Like you, you're a master at this probably where you walk into the room, you smile at someone. It just completely disarms them. They almost like don't I don't know. I, I, walk, I walk in the room and some people think, who the fuck's that and how did he get into my party? Um, so I do have, I have a slight, you know, I'm, I'm well known for being 230 pound of ugly. So I'm not quite sure a smile gets me anywhere. It's usually, the funny thing is I'll walk into a room and people will kind of look at me a bit kind of like, wow, I'm not going to talk to that guy. And then maybe the host of the party will come up to me or, I'll walk in with someone and I've walked into parties with, with people before and they're like, you know, wow, he's just saying it. So it's a fu- I get funny reactions. That's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, Steve, I just want to thank you for coming on here and just sharing your gift, your rawness, your authenticity with our audience. Um, and I hope that for anyone listening, aside from just the stuff that we spoke about, if you could just, Use Steve as an example of what's possible when you are you. Just do you, and that's possible. Um, And I'm sure Steve will attest to the fact that, you know, just like you said, like a big, big man, earrings, bald hair, like biker looking guy, wearing it all out on his sleeve and having this kind of impact on the world. And and like you said, a lifestyle engineer for others. I don't know that you would have even thought that that's where you could get with what you had. No. And it's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thank so thank you very, very much. And uh, can't wait to see you soon, man. What the best. Cheers. Bye. Bye. All right. So that wraps up the interview with Steve Sims. Hope you really, really enjoyed that one. Again, if you want to check him out, it's bluefish.com or uglysims.com, like his last name. Real cool stuff. Uh, real great guy to just be around. If you can watch some more videos of him, I think they're fantastic. With that, again, just want to remind you guys, again, I got a few more emails, but if you would just please email us and let us know about the coaching program. This is going to be the last time I ask. We're just really trying to do a little bit of our due diligence before we put all of our efforts into creating something really kick-ass. So A, Let us know if you're interested in a personal development mindset type training with Guy and I. Uh, There'll be, it's in a group, but there will be a lot of one-on-one coaching potential. And we're going to talk about things of overcoming your fears, creating the life that you want and love, the one that you've always dreamed about, whether that's in relationships, business, health, et cetera. We're going to tackle all of these things together. So again, let us know if it's something you'd be interested in and also what price point uh, you think would be good for that for a monthly fee. We're probably looking at meeting every two weeks live for the live coaching, plus obviously support in group and email and some side conversations as well. But there would be two, probably two, two and a half hour sessions uh, each and every month. Okay. With that, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you so much for sharing this with people that you know and love. Uh, It means the world to us. Have an amazing day. 
Thank you for joining us on this week's Performance Enhancing Podcast. We've taken this pep talk and created a custom action guide so you know exactly what action steps to take now to grow your business. Just head over to satoriprime.com slash podcast and download it for free. Also, please leave a comment and rate this podcast on iTunes. It'll help us get the word out. Thanks for listening. Now, go and implement. We'll see you next time. Did you run through dust?